You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible. Christians no longer practice Christian marriage. Marriage and family have already been redefined. I've been thinking a lot recently about this debate, or whatever you call it, fight, discussion, I wish it was the latter, on marriage equality, or if you're on the other side, the redefinition of marriage. And frankly, if I were being asked to think about this topic, I'd be like one of those people who are asked how you get to place X, and reply that if I were going to place X I wouldn't start from here. You see, all the important terms in the discussion have already been redefined. Redefined in terms of Western romantic hedonistic individualism. And by and large the churches have accepted these red redefinitions, gone along with them and work with them. Marriage has already been redefined. It was once a lifelong covenant between two people recognized and accepted by at least representatives of their families usually involving a sexual relationship and the implied possibility of children. It's now, in a period that believes in no-fault divorce, with subsequent remarriage as an open possibility, a love relationship between two individuals for as long as they each find it enhances their self-actualization and or more or less satisfying to their sexual and or material needs. Notice that people are now individuals and families are now nuclear. And marriage isn't lifelong, it's just a convenient legal arrangement. Ideally blessed by the church just to make things nice. You know, the crazy notion among Sydney Anglicans about getting women to put obey back in their wedding vows has more to do with Christian marriage than love does, self-actualization does, or satisfaction ever have. The only trouble with the Sydney Anglicans is that they're pagans and they want the obey to be promised by only one partner. See Ephesians chapter 5 for a more Christian view. I was reading today a blog post in which Stanley Hauerwas was reported to have said when couples come to ministers to talk about their marriage ceremonies, ministers think it's interesting to ask if they love one another. What a stupid question! How would they know? A Christian marriage isn't about whether you're in love. Christian marriage is giving you the practice of fidelity over a lifetime, in which you can look back upon the marriage and call it love. It is hard discipline over many years. My only real quibble with Hauerwas is his hard. It's only hard in the sense that hard work is hard. It's like hard work, immensely rewarding and beneficial. And marriage, if not hard work, is usually, and certainly often, intensely pleasurable too. Halvas also said this, which might well be my conclusion on this discussion too. Now, when marriage becomes a mutually enhancing arrangement until something goes wrong, then it makes no sense at all to oppose homosexual marriages. If marriage is a calling that promises lifelong mono monogamous fidelity in which children are welcomed, then we've got a problem. But we can't even get into a discussion there because Christians no longer practice Christian marriage. I'm quoting Hauerwas because he, as someone divorced and remarried, has the authority to say these things though perhaps I, delightfully married for over thirty-five years, can perhaps add my Amen with a different sort of authority. Christians no longer practice Christian marriage, and until we start to, we have little right to discuss what arrangements the State may make for the institution that it calls marriage. <laughs>